हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू केनीज एडू केयर अ ग्रुप ऑफ केनी सोल्यूशन दिस इज पार्ट वन ऑफ लेसन नंबर ट्वेल्व साउंड राइट सो द नेम ऑफ द लेसन साउंड सो इजी राइट या द नेम ऑफ द लेसन इज साउंड इट सेल्फ एंड यू माइट बी थिंकिंग कि वॉट वी कैन स्टडी एंड दिस लेसन राइट बिकॉज when it comes to a uh, sound you can uh, you can discuss about the volume whether the volume is high whether it's low right you can uh, like think of the devices that produce sound that we can study but when you come and like go through the lesson it's something else now many of you might have studied it before and you might be knowing about frequency or like many of you might be knowing about amplitude as well but for like 60 70% of the students this has some new terms that is amplitude okay and don't worry this lesson has been like this words have been introduced in this lesson itself so we'll be discussing about amplitude frequency oscillation decibel uh, pitch loudness then there are so many terms that we are going to study in the lesson and how the like we will be even discussing on the mechanism of hearing how exactly you are able to hear anything if i'm speaking something you are able to listen to me because of some reason right so that also you will be studying the whole mechanism how exactly it is happening in human being so we'll be discussing on that okay so be ready to study about sound but before i start with any part as you all know i make you all write whatever information you have on the topic right so i want you all to write like each and everything that you are aware of the term sound and then we will start with uh, you can say the lesson and as you know that part 1 is going to be the introductory part for the lesson right so we are like i'm going to introduce this lesson to you on this part where i'll be letting you know all the important points all the basic points to start with okay so please write everything that you are aware about sound you have to think huh? there are many points that you might be aware of and even one activity is there where you take two cups and in between two cups you have thread which has been attached so through one of the cup your friend is going to speak and you're going to listen to your friend to to the other cup right many of you might have done that activity so if you know that you can even explain it anything that you know about sound
so i hope every one of you wrote whatever points you knew about sound and if like you were not aware of any points on sound it's okay because like we are going to study in the lesson now why i have told you to write that whatever you knew about sound is you will be writing at the end of the lesson as well okay so at that time you will know what exactly is the difference that you have studied in the soil uh, in this lesson sound right so you know uh we are not going to discuss about the volume in sound like it's very obvious right you are in class 9 so there will be something more uh, like more to study right so over here we have the first like we will have the first topic or like you should be knowing about as particles in waves okay what you need to know particles in waves so like any of you know what exactly a wave is yeah like among all any of you if you know what exactly wave is see wave ek disturbance hota hai medium ke andar okay in which like the particles are going to move from one point to another and along with them they are even going to carry some energy without a net movement of particle okay so how can we define wave wave is a disturbance that has been created in a medium okay which moves from one point to another and it carries energy with a net movement of particle okay i'm stating it again like uh, let's suppose uh, the waves of the water but over here we are discussing about sound okay like i am giving you the example of water so that you can easily know what exactly a wave is okay wave abhi agar hum pani mein wave dekhte hain so that is a disturbance that has been created in the liquid medium that is water which and you know that move the waves keep on moving from one point to another and when they are moving they are carrying energy with a move, net movement of particle the particles are moving and like they have energy stored in them right so if they are stationary they will have potential energy as soon as the waves start moving from one point to another the stored potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy now i hope everyone have understood about potential and kinetic energy because the last lesson itself we discussed on work and energy right so you should be clear to you okay so now you know what exactly is the you can say definition of wave a wave is a disturbance in a medium which moves from one point to another what is wave wave is a disturbance in a medium which moves from one point to another and carries energy without a net movement of particle what does it carry it carries energy without a net movement of particle okay so please write this definition of wave in your book everyone after this i'll be giving you one example as well
okay so i hope you are you are uh, done writing the definition of wave now the example that you can know for this is a rubber cork on the water that goes up and down when a rock falls in the water creates a ripple now see uh just imagine that there's a rubber cork on the water and that rubber cork it's going to go up and down the water right whenever a rock is going to fall in the water so because of that a ripple has been created and you can see how exactly a wave has been created and now why why the wave has been created over here because of the disturbance in the medium that has occurred okay and because of this di disturbance it is moving from one point to another and is even carrying the energy with a net movement without the movement of the particle right so now after discussing about this wave now you know what exactly wave is right so you know we have two different types of waves to discuss and this com comes under the topic of particle motion of mechanical waves okay so you can give the heading as particle motion of mechanical waves and under that we will study two different types of waves that exist one is transverse wave and the other one is longitudinal wave so these are the two different types of waves that exist so please give the heading as particle motion of mechanical wave I hope you all have given the heading. Okay. So now the first type of wave that we have to discuss is the transverse wave. Which wave it is? Transverse wave. Now you might be thinking like what is transverse wave? So whenever the particle motion is going to be perpendicular to the direction of the wave motion. Okay. How the transverse wave is going to be? if the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of wave motion then this type of wave is a mechanical wave okay what i said for transverse wave particle motion when the particle motion is perpendicular to the direction of wave motion what it is perpendicular to direction of the wave motion then this type of wave is a mechanical wave or you can call it as transverse wave now you know the light wave that ha that is present in stadium that is always perpendicular to the direction of the wave motion so light wave in stadium is an example of transverse wave okay so please write this in your book about transverse wave
I hope you all are writing about the transverse wave in your book. Okay, now after transverse wave, the next type of wave that we have is longitudinal wave. So, see, in transverse wave, the particle waves were perpendicular to the direction of the wave, right? But in longitudinal wave, the particles are going to travel parallel to the direction of the wave motion. Okay, so remember this difference between transverse and longitudinal wave that transverse wave is going to be perpendicular to the direction of the wave motion and longitudinal wave is going to be parallel to the direction of the wave motion okay so this both the type of waves they are also a mechanical wave okay you need to know the difference of perpendicular and parallel okay these two terms are very important when it comes to transverse and longitudinal wave and for the example for longitudinal wave can be sound wave in the air the sound wave that we can like listen to in the air that is present that is a longitudinal wave because the sound wave in air uh, in that the particles are going to travel parallel to the direction of the wave okay so look, come on, write it quickly so that we can move on to the sound part as well.
I hope you all are writing about the longitudinal wave that the wave like the wave, wave particles are going to be parallel, right? Now, after this longitudinal wave, the next thing that we need to discuss is, up, is about the sound waves. So, you know that sound needs a medium to propagate. Okay? What sound needs? Sound needs a medium to propagate. And the matter or material through which the sound propagate is called a medium. Okay? The, so, the first sentence that I state is uh, actually very important. If the... If there is no medium for the sound to travel, like the sound won't be audible to you. Okay, so always there will be a need of medium for the sound to propagate and the matter or the material over here through which the sound is going to propagate is called a medium. Okay, so uh, you know that there will be the sound wave is going to propagate by continuous compression and rarefactions that are going to happen. So, you will see the diagram for compression and rarefactions once we start with the main lesson. But for now, just write down that sound needs a medium to propagate. And the material through which the sound propagate is called a medium. Okay? The material through which sound propagate is called a medium.
after this see there are some of the characteristics of the sound waves for that you need to know about wavelength time period frequency amplitude pitch volume so these are some of the terms that i want you all to know about so you know what is a wavelength now i already gave you the definition for wave when we started with this part right so how can you define wavelength now what is wavelength exactly see the as i told you that there will be compression and rarefaction which is going to take place in the sound wave right so it's going to be like this and i'll i'll just show draw it and show it to you Mm. I'll draw it over here. Okay, there will be a straight line which will pass through it, and through this, there will be continuous compression and rarefaction that is going to happen. Okay, so the distance that is present. between two successive crest or trough now crest is this upper part this upper part is the crest which is c r e s t what is this upper part called this is the crest upper part and the lower part of this is called as trough okay i'll write the spelling t r o u g h so the distance between this two successive crest or trough or you can even call them as compression and rarefaction is called as wavelength so the distance between two successive crest or trough or compression and rarefaction is called wavelength and always remember we represent wavelength like this like a lambda symbol okay so wavelength has been represented by this and the si unit of wavelength is meter what is the si unit of wavelength it's meter okay
hope like you can even draw this thing and keep in your book everyone like where you will show the crest and the trough after this like i hope you know what is wavelength now the distance between the crest and the trough and the you can say uh, crest and the trough or compression or rarefaction is wavelength right
after this like the next thing that you need to write is about the time period so you know what is time period whatever time this so compression and rarefaction is taking the wave is taking to go up and then again coming down then go up come down go up come down so the time taken by this compression or rarefaction to cross a fixed point is called a time period how would you write the definition for it the time taken by two consecutive compression or rarefactions to cross a fixed point is called a time period what is time period time taken by two consecutive compression or rarefaction to cross a fixed point is called a time period and the si unit of time period is seconds what is the si unit of it seconds okay I hope you all are writing about the time period.
after this time period we have the next thing to discuss that is frequency i hope you have written the si unit for time period is seconds okay now what is frequency the number of compression and rare fraction that is occurring per unit time we call that as frequency what is frequency the number of compressions or rare fractions per unit time okay what is frequency number of compressions or rare fractions per unit time is called frequency and the si unit of frequency is hertz which we represent it as h z okay so the number of compressions or rare fractions that are going to take place per unit time that is frequency and the si unit of frequency is hertz okay I hope you all are writing about the frequency part. Frequency is number of compression or rare fraction per unit time is called frequency, and the SI unit of frequency is hertz, which we represent it as h z, right? So after frequency, the next thing that we need to discuss is the amplitude, right? So what is amplitude? the magnitude of disturbance in a medium on either side of the mean value okay what is amplitude the disturbance that is taking place the magnitude with which the disturbance is taking place on either side either in the compression or uh, like in in the crest part or the trough part we call that as amplitude okay so you can define amplitude as the magnitude of disturbance in a medium on either side of the mean value is called as an amplitude and we represent amplitude as capital a okay so i'm defining amplitude again the magnitude of disturbance in a medium on either side of the mean value so on either side of the mean value means on either side like either on the crest side or on the trough side whatever uh, like disturbance has been created the magnitude with which it is created that is called its amplitude okay
I hope you all are writing it. Now after amplitude we have the next term as pitch which you might have heard like uh, keep your pitch low, keep your pitch high, right? So the number of compression or rarefaction per unit time is pitch and always remember that pitch is going to be directly proportional to frequency, okay? So we have high pitch and low pitch and whatever number of compression or rarefaction that is taking place per unit time that is the pitch and pitch is directly proportional to frequency okay
after this now we have the next thing to discuss that is volume so we know like when we uh, volume is volume can be either low or it can be uh, high right so the volume or loudness of a sound it depends on amplitude so what kind of amplitude you have whether the amplitude is more or it's high so the volume is always going to depend upon amplitude and the force with which an object is made to vibrate it gives the loudness okay so the fourth the force with which any object vibrate it gives its loudness right So I'll stop after this volume today and I'll show you all the lessons that we have. Okay. So I'll show you all the part one by one. You need to go through the lesson. Like I'll be starting with it in the next class. So make sure you go through it and you revise everything that we have studied so far in the like for this part, right? So in this lesson we are going to study first like we will start with studying about the uh, like production of sound how exactly sound has been produced we will study about that then after studying production of sound in detail we will discuss on propagation of sound you know uh, like propagation of sound again is very important and the reason behind is uh, because you know we i gave you one statement that sound needs a medium to propagate right so for that reason you can say that propagation of sound becomes very important because if the sound is not propagating it won't be audible to you okay then after propagation of sound we'll discuss on propagation of sound through air which is again very important how exactly the sound is propagating through air we'll discuss on that then after that after discussing propagation of sound we'll discuss on a vibrating object producing a series of compression and rarefaction what it what it exactly produces like a, whenever an object is vibrating it's going to produce number of compressions and rarefactions so the same that you wrote for uh, the definition right so after this after discussing on this vibrating object we discussed on like sound needs a medium to travel right and we all know that sound needs a medium to travel so after this after discussing on that sound needs a medium to travel 
after this we discussed on that sound waves are longitudinal wave right then we discussed on the characteristics of sound wave so i want each one of you to please go through this slide as well about the characteristics of the sound wave then we'll discuss on the frequency of the sound wave in detail okay So after this frequency we'll discuss on time the time period of a sound wave in detail okay then after this time period of sound wave we discussed on the amplitude of sound wave in detail so please go through it as well everyone okay then after amplitude of sound wave we'll discuss on the pitch of the sound wave okay then after this pitch we'll discuss on the speed of sound what exactly is the speed of the sound we'll discuss on that and then after discussing the pitch of the sound we will discuss on like speed of sound at in different medium because this is again very important right then we'll discuss on uh, echo and reverberation in detail okay this is again an important point then after that we'll discuss on uses of multiple reflection of sound in detail okay After this we'll discuss on range of hearing in detail. 
ओके फिर रेंज ऑफ हियरिंग के बाद विल डिस्कस ऑन यूज ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक साउंड विच अगेन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आस राइट सो विल डिस्कस ऑन द यूज ऑफ अल्ट्रासोनिक साउंड एंड देन आफ्टर दिस विल डिस्कस ऑन सोनार इन डिटेल about the structure of the human ear and then at the end we have the summary discussion for the whole lesson okay then we have like some of the exercise questions to discuss and i want each one of you to please go through this question quickly so all together like we we might be having 18 to 20 questions over here which we will discuss at the end of the lesson okay 
like once I complete with teaching you the whole lesson then I'll start with all this So in this lesson also like we are having so many questions to discuss. Okay like we have 22 questions that we will be discussing at the end of the lesson. And this is how like uh, we will be completing with the whole lesson sound. So make sure that you, are, you all are revising whatever we have discussed today in the whole part. Okay. So I'll be continuing with the rest of the part in the next class. Thank you everyone.